we're um, heading off this morning for a little bit of a jaunt through what is now a non-existent landscape. Um, the title of this walk was, There's Water There? Question mark. Um, because one of the things that I think is quite extraordinary about how much we've changed Vancouver, and certainly today, and we've been talking about this for a little bit, about the extraordinary change in the city, and it's going too fast, we need to slow down, oh my goodness. Well, we've never stood still in this city. And one of the extraordinary things is how much we've played with this area through here. Um, if we click the hills and went back and landed here, um, oh, any time in the 1880s, in for a bit of a surprise because we'd be up past our necks in water right now um, because Falls Creek came all the way here all the way up to the cliff edge at Clark Drive it stretched all the way over to Prior Street so Prior Street was waterfront property it went all the way that way to uh, the cliffs uh, on the other side of Great Northern Railway uh, Great Northern Way Great Northern Way is actually filled because that is the Great Northern Railway freight yard because they had no way to get into Vancouver. The Canadian Pacific Railway had grabbed all the good bits, Burrard Inlet, uh, the North Shore of Falls Creek. Um, they had the easy access down the uh, Burrard Inlet as well to get in here. Other railroads going, how do we get in here? The Great Northern eventually built, basically along the Grandview Highway alignment, came up and over the hill and then down into what becomes Great Northern. So that cliff edge there is the edge of Falls Creek, and it's actually volcanic outcropping. So if you go up, the apartment building has got the great staircase that wends its way back up the cliff. We go up there and poke at the rocks. It's all volcanic uh, outcroppings, and so that's the edge of the creek there. And then uh, First Avenue, Second Avenue, and a bit of Third all disappeared under the creek as it goes across uh, Main Street. So the creek itself today is 15 times smaller than its original size. So we've just kept squeezing and squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. So if we were landing uh, here and getting very wet, um, you'd walk out and you would basically crawl up into a small point of land right here. And then standing right in front of you was a small, fairly crudely built bridge that went from the narrow point uh, here to a narrow point of land roughly where Terminal Avenue is, and so that was the bridge across the creek, and there was a mouth of the creek through here that was just narrow enough. So early development in Vancouver, one of the reasons Mount Pleasant exists as that commercial center was the early uh, Vancouver Road if you were in New Westminster, and if you were in what becomes Vancouver, the New Westminster Road, known to us as Kingsway, um, that was the early way to get out to civilization, and so folks coming in this way would cross the bridge. The bridge was built in 1872, and so this then quite literally became the main road into Vancouver. It was the reason why the name was changed from Westminster to Main Street in 1910, because everyone said, well, it's the Main Street. So, it's the Main Street. So this is why this street took on an early business character. It's why Main and Hastings was the business center, the banks, the hotels, and things like that. And it's why Mount Pleasant at the top of the hill grew into that independent community because it was right at the main road intersection. And Main and Hastings grows because the streetcar line in 1889 comes down Cordova Street, turns on Hastings, and comes out this way, crosses the bridge, and goes up to Mount Pleasant. And so goes over to Granville and Broadway, back downtown. So that's the loop. So that's where the commercial activity <laughs> is. So we would be standing here. We'd be looking at our bridge. We'd be trying to dry ourselves off. And we might just slip into the hotel that was here. Fairly nice granite block hotel, three stories high. Uh, built for travelers heading out to New Westminster or folks coming in from New Westminster. So we might dry ourselves off, grab a beer before walking back into town and, and sort of wondering what the hell happened with this water business. Um, or we would choose to walk this way and we'd be walking down a little street called Park Lane. Now Park Lane was interesting because it was actually um, houses and small businesses facing the creek this way, uh, but it was generally the backs of all the businesses on Main Street on the other side. Um, briefly, this was also the red light district for Vancouver. We've had three major red light districts, four actually, uh, we're going to see three of them today. Um, so Park Lane was uh, with the red light district briefly as well. So as this area develops, initially, the waterfront here supported a small sawmill just back. 
crew where those warehouses are there. A couple of other commercial entities on the creek. Uh, not much going here, a couple of wharves, things like that. Uh, the bridge, and then on the other side, the Great Northern Railway had its freight wharf. And roughly where the um, parking lot is, uh, on the other side of Terminal, opposite the SkyTrain station, that was the public market building in 1910. So that's where you went for fresh fruit and vegetable and things. Livestock was still tied up in front of what is the police building back at Maine and Cordova. So if you wanted to buy a horse, cow, pig, you had to go that way. Fruits, vegetables and things down this way. Um, and then, as you came back along through here, what we're going to do is walk basically Quebec Street and the backs of things.